Hi, hello, I'm Heather or Miss Postal Weight if you're one of my students and this is Pages with Postal Weight. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And today I'm gonna do my middle grade wrap up. So all the books I read in January that are middle grade, let's talk about them. If that sounds good, stick around. I read quite a few different books this month. I'm actually kind of impressed with my selection. So let's jump in. The first book that I'm going to talk about is probably, there's two in this pile that are so good. There's three in this pile that are so good that I'm having a little trouble figuring out which one I want to put as my January like best book of the month. So struggling a little on the decisions there. This is one of them. The first book that I read was Simon Sort of Says. It's by Erin Bow. This one is both humorous and heavy at the same time. Simon's family moves to National Quiet Zone, and it's an area supposedly in Nebraska where you can't have any other signals interfering because the scientists that live there are trying to listen to outer space. So no one can have a microwave, no one can have a computer, like internet service, no one can have telephone or cell phones, everybody has landlines. So it's a quiet zone to facilitate the research going on there. Um, and Simon is so excited to move there for a very good reason. Um, Simon is the only child of, uh, his dad is a deacon in the Catholic church, something to that effect. And his mom is an undertaker, like a mortician. So they basically take over the mortuary at this small little town and the dad is now working at the church and he basically tells everybody that they had to move because of an incident with emus or something like llamas, an incident with llamas in the church. And there was an incident with llamas, but that's not the real reason that they moved to a place with no websites, no internet, no nothing. Simon is the sole survivor of a school shooting. And that comes with notoriety and I guess invasions of privacy and he wants to be known for something else. He wants a fresh start. He is understandably traumatized and you get very good mental health rep in this book. You get um, Simon trying to figure out who he is and how to handle everything and he makes some pretty good friends. There are funny things that happen. There is a friend of his who she herself is a little different and they form a really good strong friendship here in an effort to give the poor scientists what they've been wanting all this time, a message from space, right? The characters are, are heartwarming. The events are understandable and timely. This is my only book with a name in it this month. So it's the only book that I got to put on my middle grade name game challenge. But I also got to mark this one off for a personal phobia with another reading challenge that I'm doing because as a teacher, that is probably one of my worst fears. I highly recommend this book. Five stars, and it handles something super hard in a way that is digestible. That's what is beautiful about middle grade. They don't shy away from the hard things. They just help you to put them in a way that you can maybe work through them and talk about them. Fantastic book. Fan fantastic book. Next read Green Glass House. It is by Kate Milford. The cover's kind of fun. Um, 
I'm going to be super honest. I never would have picked this book up in a hundred years. This would not have been one that I reached for. But the beauty of booktube is challenges and things. If you, if you, you can find fun people to read with all over booktube. And so I joined a reading challenge in January that was like a, a winter fest one. And so you got points for reading books that were cold or wintry or anyway, everyone was recommending this one. They kept saying this was a good one. It's a mystery. I don't gravitate to that genre. It was really cute. I'm really glad I read it and a lot of people enjoyed it. Now this is only a four star read for me because I don't love this kind of genre but I think there's a second one and I am gonna read it. It's cute. The story centers on this inn that's up on top of this cliff that's really kind of an out of the way zone. It's the holiday season and our main character Milo. Milo is really looking forward to basically a quiet holiday with his family. They don't have any guests, nothing's like planned, so they're just gonna have a nice holiday. And then it's like the first day of winter break and they get like the signal that um, they have a guest. So they're way up on top of a cliff. Um, and so the people that are coming have to ride this like weird like trolley thing up the conveyor belt to get up there or they can take the steps but it's winter and it's icy and it's snowy and so people keep showing up and pretty soon they have a whole house full of all these guests they ended up inviting um the cook back from her holiday and and like just have to run the inn but all of the guests have some sort of weird connection to the green glass house. And there's something about the house that Milo and his family maybe don't know. So I'm not gonna say anything else cause it was a delight and you just kind of run right along with Milo. Milo is a neurodivergent character and so you also get some uh, wonderful representation there as well as um, kind of some mental health things because they're checking in. They handled it so nicely. It's a cute book with a lot of fun mysteries. I highly recommend. Cute, cute, cute. Uh, so four stars and I'm so glad uh, something got onto my plate that I never would have chosen. Um, this is a weird one, but it goes and ties in with my fact that I am reading Madagascar um, right now. So I'm kind of deep diving and trying to read literature and things about Madagascar and just teach myself a little bit more. This was a children's book, so I'm going to count it in here as middle grade. It is nonfiction. Tamara B. Orr is our author, Madagascar Enchantment of the World. It's another one of those scholastics. Lots of wonderful pictures. They break down just different facts and fun things. You get to see the lemurs. Um, I enjoyed it. It's not like, you know, I love this book or anything, but I really did enjoy it um, for what it was. It did a lovely job. So not that it matters, but I gave it four stars. Um, this next one's in the running for my favorite book of January. I don't know whether to choose this one or Simon sort of says, or I've even got another one. I just read a lot of really good books. So this is Mascot. This is a novel in verse and it's told from like seven perspectives, mostly students in a advanced writing class and their teacher. And they go to a school, Washington, D.C. Um, oh, it's Rye, Virginia. Fantastic. So it's Rye, Virginia, right outside of Washington, D.C. Rye has a mascot that is offensive. And they are asked in their writing class to basically debate on whether or not they should keep the mascot. And the teacher, in her brilliance, and it was a, a really smart thing, she not only pairs the students up, but she gets them on the opposite side of their actual feelings about the topic. So they have to debate and they have to do opposite sides. It causes an entire community 
to basically fight amongst themselves. It touches on so much racism and articulating who has the right to say what is offensive. It's such a well done book and both authors handled this so well. I'm so sorry. This is by Charles Waters and Tracy Sorrell. It, you just have to read it. It's a very quick read. You have characters from all walks of life. You have characters from different ethnic groups. You have characters from different family types. You have characters from different economic situations. And hearing their voices and their different perspectives and the way that it is um, presented was so good. It was so good. I loved this book. Five stars, 100% powerful. I need this one in my library at school. Obviously, it is a, um, <laughs> a library book. Almost every book I read this month was a library book. There's a few that I need to buy them. I have a confession to make. This month was the first month that I have ever read Amulet. Um, this series has been around for years, for years. And the author, Zazu Kabushi, is coming to the Festival of Books that is in a month. They have announced that they're writing the last one. They're finishing the series. I'm like, well, if I'm going to go see him, then I need to read the series. So I'm reading them. And I'm having a little trouble because I can't find book two. I've been able to get my hands on three and four and like others, but I'm struggling with number two. And I feel like I need to read two before I jump into anything else. It's a reader problem. Don't worry about it. So <laughs> um, cute, fast, super popular. My students love it. I mean, it's the pictures are gorgeous. We're going into a fantasy setting. I want to kind of say portal fantasy because we kind of go through to get to this other world. Fantastic. I loved it. It was so cute. So I'm starting my amulet journey. It was four stars. I'm even asking my students, hey, anybody got amulet number two I could borrow for, you know, two days? I promise I'll get it back too fast. They're like, you must be desperate if you're asking us. <laughs> like, yeah, maybe. The next book is for my book club that I'm doing with my school. I really enjoyed it. We went a different route. So we read White Bird, but not the graphic novel. So this is RJ Palacio. This is kind of, it's not a sequel, but it's a connection to uh, the Wonder series. Julian is kind of the antagonist in Wonder. He obviously has repercussions and consequences from the choices that he made in that book. In this book, he's at a new school and he's reaching out to his grandmother and his grandmother, he wants to know about her story. And this is basically her story. She was in France during World War II and she talks about what happened to her. She's Jewish and the impact that all of the events had with her. I really haven't seen or read a Holocaust story that centered on a French Jewish protagonist. That was wonderful to get that perspective. The book's fantastic. It's a novelization of both like the graphic novel. Um, it did have some pictures, if I can show you. I think these came out of the graphic novel. So you do get some pictures integrated into the story. It was well done. And I'm excited because we're going to watch the movie to compare it to the book. So kind of a fun thing with my gets. My last book was a lot of fun. And this is the third one that is in competition. I can't have a three-way tie for the best book in January, but that's where I'm looking right now. And that is The Bearing Grounds by David A. Robertson. This is, it's not too long. It is the start of a series. Um, I think they said it's book one of the Misawa saga. So it's been compared to kind of that idea of the 
Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. So if you can think of that portal fantasy type of thing where you have children that enter a different world that they have connections to and there's a time difference in that situation. They show up and the world that they have shown up into is in like permanent winter. They have to figure out what's going on there and how to address it. I really enjoyed this. This is a native voice um, own story. The two protagonists, we have Morgan and Eli are both foster kids and they are in, Eli has just joined the family. Morgan has been there for a couple of months. And so the two of them are kind of figuring out their dynamic and um, figuring out the situation in the home and together kind of open up a portal that leads them to this other world. It's adventurous, it's heartwarming, it's powerful. I really, really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed watching the characters process. I love that our author has them have real emotions and allow them to process through those emotions. Like we're not sugarcoating things. They are working through difficult things and there's so much room for the sequel. There's so much room to keep going with this story. I really enjoyed this. I'm not going to spoil anything for you. So highly recommend. Again, came to this book because of that same reading challenge, Winter. And I'm so glad I found this book. So yet again, another one I need on my library shelf. And what a fantastic read. Obviously a five star. So um, hey, help me out here. Because <laughs> your opinion so matters. But maybe, <laughs> maybe you could put in the comments which one you think I should choose for my January best book. Because I don't know. How do you choose between these? They're so stinking good. So good. I don't know. I'm going to be honest, I'm probably leaning a little more toward this one. And it has to do with my own personal fears and anxiety around school shootings that this one hasn't left my brain since I read it. But I still think these are really, really good. So, um, yeah. Anyway, uh, if you like... <laughs> Um, this kind of uh, content, please hit subscribe, join me. I just hit 100 subscribers and I'm over the moon. So if you're coming back again and again, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for being here. And um, yeah, keep reading. Bye guys.